Okay, let's go back a few years and remember remember doing this. What is 14 into 1,767? So you remember this process that you learned, 14, you ask how many times does it go into 17? Well, once, and then 1 times 14 is 14. It's subtracted, we got 3. You bring down the 6, how many times does 14 go into 36? Well, that's 2. 2 times 14 is 28. Subtract, we get 8. We bring down the 7. How many times does 14 go into 87? I think 6. 6 times 14 is 84. And then we subtract. And then there was nothing more to bring down, so this here was our remainder. Yeah, so you, you probably remember doing that. We can do the exact same thing with polynomials. So let's say I had Mm. Say I had this one here, and I wanted to know what is x squared plus 7x minus 8 divided by x plus 3. Well, we would do, we would do a similar thing here. We'd ask ourselves what times x would give us x squared. Well, we know that's x. And then we would multiply x times x, x squared, x times 3, 3x. And then we would subtract, and this would always be 0. 7x take away 3x would be 4x. And we'd bring down the negative 8, and we would do the same thing. What times x is 4x? Well, we'd multiply that by 4. Then 4 times x is 4x. 4, 4 times 3 is 12, and we'd subtract 4x minus 4x is 0, negative 8 minus 12 is negative 20, and there's nothing more to bring down. So this here would be our remainder. And there's a couple of ways we can, we can write this. If we go back to this one, we could say that 1,767, so this number here, you would get by going 14 times 126, it's this times this, plus the remainder, because there was some left over. So we could do the same thing here. We could say x squared plus 7x minus 8. Well, that would be x plus 3 times x plus 4, but it didn't work out perfectly because we have a remainder, so there's minus 20. And there's another way we could write it too. We could write our our quotient here is 1,767 divided by 14 is equal to 126, but there was this 3 that we couldn't quite divide by 14. So there's another way of writing our division statement. And if we were doing this one, we were, were saying that x squared plus 7x minus 8 divided by x plus 3 is equal to x plus 4 but not perfectly, because there's a minus 20 that we couldn't actually divide by x plus 3. So we'll go through another example here of this, this we call this long division of, of uh, polynomials. And um, we're just going to have to get good at, at working through that procedure there so that we can do some division. And you simply get good at this by just practicing the procedure. So let's let's go through another one here. What times x is 4x cubed? Well, that'd be 4x squared. So 4x squared times x is 4x cubed. 4 times minus 5 is minus 20x squared. Now we're going to subtract. These are going to disappear. You got to be a little bit careful with the signs here. So we have negative 2 minus minus. Minus minus is plus. So negative 2 plus 20 is 18x squares bring down the 7x. What times x is 18x squared? Well, we need an 18x here. 18 times x, or sorry, 18x times x is 18x squared. 18x times minus 5 is minus 80x. No, my, 
minus 90x, minus 90x, and we're going to subtract, so 18 minus 18 is 0, 7 minus minus 90 is 97x, bring down the negative 4, what times x is 97x, we're going to need a 97 up there, now we're getting a bit big here, 97 times 5, 485, and again we're going to subtract, so this minus this is 0, negative 4 minus minus, so negative 4 plus that would be 481, and nothing more to bring down, so this is our remainder here. So we could say that this divided by this is equal to So this divided by x minus 5, it equaled x, 4x squared plus 18x plus 97, but there was a 481 that didn't quite work out when we divided it by that. Or we could say that 4x cubed minus 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 would equal x minus 5 times 4x squared plus 18x plus 97, and then there's an extra 481. So you should be able to write your division statements in, in both ways. Let's do a couple other examples here, and then I'm going to show you um, what this remainder theorem is, is all about. Let's, let's put the, let's do this one. So what times x is x squared? That's x. And so x times this and this would be this, and now we'd subtract. And we'd ask ourselves, what times x is 6x? Well, that's 6. 6 times x is 6x. And then we subtract. 6x minus 6x is 0. 3 minus minus 6 is 9. And this here is our remainder, remainder 9. Well, what's, watch what happens here. So the original question was, what is x squared plus 5x plus 3 divided by x minus 1? Well, what if I took the opposite sign here, so x minus 1, and I took plus 1, and I entered it into the function? So I'm going to put positive 1 in here for x. And when we do that, 1 squared is 1, 5 times 1 is 5, and then we have the plus 3, and 1 plus 5 is 6, and 6 plus 3 is 9. Hmm. Same as the remainder. Let's try this example. Let's do the long division. So what times x is x squared? That's x. Multiply this times this, this times this, we get this. Now subtract. x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative 3x minus 2x is negative 5x. Bring down the 2. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. Subtract 0. 2 minus minus 10 is positive 12. So let's try putting the opposite sign, which would be minus 2, in for x. If we put negative 2 in here, square that, that's 4. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. 4 plus 6 is 10, 10 plus 2 is 12. Hmm. It's the same. So the remainder theorem says, if a polynomial is divided by x minus a, then the remainder will be the result when you, the result you get when you substitute a into the polynomial. So if this is my polynomial here, 3x squared minus 2x plus 4, and I divide it by x minus 2, I'm going to take positive 2, and I'm going to put this in the polynomial and work it out. So 12 minus 4 is 8. 8 plus 4 is back to this would be the remainder without having to do the long division. And if we had another one here, say we're going to divide this by x plus 3. Well, now I'll take minus 3. So it's like the, it's the opposite sign. Take minus 3 and substitute it in here. So that'd be 9, minus 9, minus 2. This one's going to have a remainder of 
minus 2. So that's the remainder theorem. Now there's another um, method that we can divide polynomials by. Instead of long division, we could use something that's called synthetic division. And this is kind of a shortcut method. And again, it's just another strategy that, that you can get used to. And um, you, can, you can use either synthetic division or long division, whatever you're, you're comfortable with. But some of you might like to try, to try this one here. Um, well, so what we do is we take the coefficients of our polynomial in descending order. So the coefficient on x squared is 1, the coefficient on x is 7, and minus 12. And then we draw kind of a little grid like this, and then we're going to divide by x minus 2. So we'll put minus 2 here, and then I put a little times, put a little times symbol here, and a little minus symbol here. And we take that first term, which is a first coefficient, which is 1, and just write it straight down here. And now we go negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and we put that number there. And now, now we subtract 7 minus minus 2 is like 7 plus 2, or 9. And then negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. Put that number there. And then negative 12 minus minus 18 is negative 12 plus 18, which is 6. So now we can say that x squared plus 7x minus 12 divided by x minus 2 is, these will be the new coefficients, and this last one will be your remainder. So the new coefficients are going to be 1x plus 9. Remainder, 6. So we can say that x squared plus 7x minus 12 divided by x minus 2 is x plus 9 plus the 6 that we couldn't actually, couldn't actually divide there. Let's try another one. So this has a 1 in front of the x cubed, a 2 in front of the x squared, now there is no x term in here, so I need to put a 0 in here for 0x, and then a 1 for the constant term. So it's the same thing with long division. Once we write in descending order, if there's a variable that's missing, then we need to make sure we add a 0x or a 0x squared, whatever, whatever degree is, is missing in the polynomial. So I've got my coefficients, 1, 2, 0, and 1, and I'm going to divide it by x plus 3. And I'm going to take the first one and put it down here, and then 3 times 1 is 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And subtract, 0 minus minus 3 is positive 3. 3 times 3 is 9. And then subtract, 1 minus 9 is minus 8. So x cubed plus 2x squared plus 0x plus 1 divided by x plus 3 would be 1x squared minus 1x plus 3, and the remainder was, it's a minus there, remainder minus 8 over the x plus 3, because we couldn't actually divide that. So that's another method that you can do to um, divide polynomial functions. So in this video, you should know how to divide polynomial functions. Take a, take a polynomial and divide it by a binomial, like these examples here, using synthetic division or long division, whatever you prefer. And um, in addition, you should also be familiar with the remainder theorem and its concepts.